Previously on Endangered. The Lalantos probe landed on Saturn's moon Titan just over 18 months ago, and for the last nine months has been detecting signals, which the Space Corps described as unlikely to be naturally occurring. It's more like this thing on Titan wants to be investigated. That suggests sentience and reasoning behind the signal. There have been many reports of alien abductions, people claiming they were removed by aliens, examined or probed, and then returned. Egyptology? What on earth is the use of Egyptology on a spaceship? Early 21st century social networking? What on earth is the use of that? The symbols are not all Egyptian hieroglyphs. Some are. Other symbols may be in a similar style, but they just don't make any sense at all. Well, someone is trying very hard to frustrate us. It's an emoji. Blood, come in here. Now, dear viewer, given that we live on a planet orbiting a star 2,600 of your light years from your planet, I expect you are wondering why it is we speak English. Well, suffice to say, the producers of this program decided it was far too much faff to come up with a whole alien language. It was enough effort to assign an alien alphabet. So, just live with it. Pretend you have a fish in your ear, or something like that. Blod, we have a new assignment for you. It's not an off-home assignment, is it? Yes, we have been observing a species which appear to be approaching the technological level where they are in danger of damaging their planet. But it is my daughter's wedding soon. You'll be back in time for that. You'll be gone less than ten years. But I was hoping to help with the preparations... Nonsense. That is the work of your spouses. But... No buts. You are going on this mission. It is your duty. I suppose you leave me no choice. This is your target. 
the inhabitants call it Earth. <laughs> Earth? What an odd name. The inhabitants call themselves human. <laughs> Our probe sent back images of some examples of Earth architecture. Take note of these in case you have to replicate any structures for your use. Anything you construct must not look out of place. What awful looking constructions. Yes, but you must pay attention, Blod. It is important you are not observed by the native population. They are far too primitive to be able to interact with us. Our probe suggests the current population is 50 million. By the time you get there, we estimate it will have reached 500 million. This is a dangerous population level for such a small planet. What do you want me to do when I get there? You should tag and monitor sample humans <laughs> to determine their behaviour patterns. We need to work out if and how we should influence their behaviour. Why do we care about them? Are they any threat to us? Probably not. They will almost certainly wipe themselves out before they gain the technology to reach us. But we care about all endangered species. If we can do something to prevent them going extinct, then so much the better. How tedious. You really don't care about wildlife, do you? No. Good evening, and welcome to news. Scientists monitoring Big Star suggest it may start to expand in the next 25 years. The potential impact on home could be significant. The search for a new home planet continues, but now appears to be more important than ever. Meanwhile, the Institute of Space Wildlife Research have announced a mission to a home-like planet. The planet, which has been previously visited by an automated probe, is in danger of overpopulation by the primitive inhabitants who call themselves human. <laughs> the mission will be commanded by Space Wildlife Operative Blod. Blod, please tell us about your mission. Yes, we have been instructed to monitor the inhabitants of the planet they call Earth. <laughs> what a silly name. Well, what can you expect from primitive creatures? What do you hope to learn from monitoring these creatures? We are trying to determine if they are in danger of damaging the planet. The population is growing exponentially and is in danger of exceeding the capacity to feed the inhabitants. There is concern that by the time they reach industrialization, the population will be so high that they will seriously impact the environment. On that subject, the environmentalist protest group suggests the reason behind this mission is because this Earth <laughs> planet is being considered as a new home for us, and you are simply paving the way to steal the planet from them. That is nonsense. If we do need to find a new planet, there are plenty to choose from, without taking theirs. No, this planet is being officially classified a nature reserve. So, Blod, are you looking forward to this mission? Yes, of course. It is a great honour to be asked to command this mission. When I joined the Institute of Space Wildlife Research, I was a lazy youth looking for an easy ride. I mean, space wildlife. How ridiculous. I never expected them to actually send me on a mission. I thought I'd stay at my lovely desk job forever, and with my daughter's wedding coming up too. And here we are, just a year into the journey, and I'm so bored. This ship does have an impressive selection of recreational facilities. The exercise room, football, arm ball, bat ball. Then there's the stage room, the film room, we even have table games. Burke, for example, partakes of every facility with gusto. Some facilities more than others. I know, you can't keep him out of the mating hall. What recreational facilities do you enjoy? When I'm on a journey like this, I long to be shut up in my own house with my own things. The virtual reality suite can emulate that for you. It's not the same. 
I know it's good, but when I'm there, people still interrupt me. Well, you need to find something to amuse yourself. We still have a long way to go before we reach Earth. <laughs> Backgammon? Done it. Drafts? Done it. Ludo? Done it. Monopoly? Done it. Solitaire? Well, at least that has the advantage I can do it on my own. Do you want to join me in the mating hall? Hmm. Okay, I'll fetch Burke and join you. So, how have you occupied yourself over the last year? I've been studying the telemetry sent about Earth. <laughs> Hardly recreational. Oh, I disagree. It's fascinating. It appears these humans have very short lifespans, only about one-tenth of a year. They must barely get past nappy training. I know. I just can't imagine they ever manage to achieve anything. Why Boss thinks they'll ever be a threat, even to themselves, I have no idea. Surely you are not suggesting Boss has another motive for sending us there? No, I just think he has wildly inflated estimates of what these primitive animals are capable of. Well, we'll know soon enough. We'll be there in another quarter year. Well, we're here. Let's start looking for some interesting subject humans. Lo chiamo telescopio. Guarda come fa sembrare vicini gli oggetti lontani. Sì. Ti fa sentire come se potessi raggiungere e toccare oggetti distanti. Sì. Guarda come i raffinati dettagli dell'architettura si rivelano in tutta la loro gloria. Sì. Di notte ti permette di esaminare i meravigliosi misteri dei cieli. Sì. I rilievi e le depressioni della luna. Sì. E rivela che i pianeti non sono punti, bensì... Sono dischi. Sì. Intorno a loro orbitano altri dischi. Sì. È davvero meraviglioso. Sì. La bellezza della creazione di Dio sarà mostrata a tutti. Sì. Hai scorreggiato? No. This one is interesting. Not only does it demonstrate rudimentary language skills, but it was using a primitive telescope. Well, I suppose that's not bad for a wild animal. Its theories about tides are ridiculous, though. Now, this king is an interesting example. For some reason, it is being held prisoner. It is an important leader of humans, so we must remove it directly from its cell. But they will notice it has gone. Boss said we should not reveal ourselves. We can extract it without revealing ourselves. They will assume it managed an elaborate escape. From a locked cell? Stop arguing. Turn on the monitor. It appears we are a bit late. Oops.
I think you'll find this one is much more promising. It has only recently completed its studies as a student, but already is demonstrating a significant aptitude in mathematics, mechanics, physics, and astronomy. Why are you holding that? It's called an apple. I know what it's called. I asked why you are holding it. This human <laughs> saw it fall. Pardon me for being dismissive, but seeing an apple fall hardly requires great aptitude. But it has realized the effect of gravitational force. Yes, well, anyone who has ever had to pick up something heavy has realized the effect of gravitational force. And it recently discovered the generalized binomial theorem. That's kindergarten arithmetic. Well, I think it shows great promise. I think it is a waste of time who will never amount to anything. Return it. Do you want to add this to your collection of souvenirs? Don't be ridiculous. Why would I want a souvenir of this specimen? Besides which, that is a fruit. It will decay. Return it when you return the specimen. Okay. I don't know. I send you out on your first specimen hunt, and this is what you come up with. Obviously, if I want a job done properly, I have to do it myself. Sorry. You just can't get the staff. It's an early draft, but tell me what you think, Bob. I know it's said in the obvious. Everyone is basically the same. God has given them the same stuff, including life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I like the life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness bit, but I think you need to make the first part of that sentence a bit more formal. Any other suggestions? How about replacing when things happen with when in the course of human events? Yes, that's quite good. I like that. And replace when bad stuff happens with when a long train of abuses and usurpations. Yes, okay. And replace this is what we've had to put up with, with such has been the patient sufferance of these colonies. If you're so bloody clever, you write it, you little... Bob, what was that noise? What is that smell? I don't like this one. I think I'll terminate it now. Why? Well, it thinks it can treat other humans as possessions, just because they have a different skin colour. But what about this declaration it is writing? It does say everyone is basically the same, and that all humans <laughs> have the right to life and liberty. You're right. Once this declaration is complete, no doubt it will stop treating other humans as possessions and will treat them as its equals. We will return it once it's been measured and tagged. the bucket, boy. I don't understand. We care for them, feed them, keep them warm, and yet they seem to suffer as greatly as they did on the battlefield. 
<laughs> yes, ma'am. Typhus, <laughs> cholera, and dysentery are more deadly than the Russian guns. <laughs> yes, ma'am. We must collect data on all the cases which pass through here and find a way to present it. Maybe we can learn something which may improve things. <laughs> yes, ma'am. What is that revolting smell? This place always has a revolting smell, ma'am. If you ask me, it always smells of sh- Why did you suggest this one? Well, it was born in the same place as we found the first one we examined, the one who made a rudimentary telescope. I wondered if there was something special about that place. Don't be ridiculous. Sorry. Regardless of that, this one is interesting. It cares for the sick and dying, but does so in a place which serves to aid the demise of its charges. They don't seem to understand the need to dispose of their waste. Do they not understand disease at all? I overheard it. It wants to gather and present data, but it does not know how best to do this. Can you help? Yes. When you return it, leave some sample pie charts in its desk. This is KRAP Seattle. It's Tuesday, July 2nd, 1940. It's a beautiful morning in Washington State, and this is the 10 o'clock news. Dignitaries far and wide attended yesterday's opening of the new suspension bridge across Puget Sound. In his address, the mayor dedicated the bridge to generations of service to the local community. In a connected story, a local man is recovering in hospital after being found wandering, dazed, and confused near the bridge shortly after the opening ceremony. It is understood he claims the last thing he remembers is bright lights and a really unpleasant smell. And since being found, he has been warning people about the wind. Given the foul odor emanating from the gentleman, doctors believe he suffered a mental breakdown following an unpleasant digestive incident. Your idea of trying to influence the behaviour of that Hitler chap didn't really turn out for the best, did it? Please don't mention that to anyone ever again. It's best if we just forget it. Okay. I think it might be best if we just picked one of these humans from birth and just monitored it every nine or ten of their Earth years. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up! The baby's coming! I'm driving at 30 miles per hour! That is the speed limit! Speed limit? Really, darling? I don't think that sort of language is becoming of a lady! Have you ever passed an old coconut in one piece? No! Well, once you have, I'll allow you to criticize my language. Mr. Taylor, you're the father of a beautiful baby boy.
What is that awful smell?